that I asked myself in high school before I like kind of just focused on baseball. I was like, do I love baseball? And it was like, mm. yeah, a hundred percent. So I went full, full throttle. Just like follow your passion. Um, I mean, if you love something, then by all means do it. Um, and like, don't give up. Welcome to the Powerful One Podcast, episode 22 with Troy Stokes Jr. Guys, Troy was born and raised in Baltimore, Maryland, where he attended Calvert Hall High School. He was drafted straight out of high school in the fourth round in 2014 by the Milwaukee Brewers, and he is currently on the 40-man roster in the MLB with the Detroit Tigers, where he is set to make his official debut this year. Troy also has a non-for-profit that he started called Swing for More, where the goal is helping inner city and urban areas get interested in baseball again. They have different annual discussions, camps, and a bunch of information to get kids enjoying baseball and get them having success not only in baseball, but in everyday life. So a really amazing program that he does with his nonprofit, Swing for More. So definitely check that out on his website. And in this episode, we talk about everything from the current MLB holdout situation. We talk about Troy's early passion for baseball, being drafted at such a young age straight out of high school, the hardest parts about pro ball. We talk about mindset, adversity, motivation. And Troy also gives his main piece of life advice for everybody and so much more. Here it is, episode 22 with Troy Stokes. Enjoy. All right, cool. We're here with Troy Stokes Jr. What's up, bro? What's up, man? Thanks for having me. Yeah, dude, thank you for being on, man. I- I'm glad this worked out. This this worked out great. We're actually both in Florida right now, which is pretty funny. Yeah. So yeah, man, you're just. I mean, I guess you're just. Uh, you know, you got surgery on your on your wrist. I guess your hand tomorrow, but I guess um, you're just you know killing time until they come up with a decision what they're gonna do with the season. Is that about right? Yeah, pretty much. I mean, we've been. We've been kind of just, I mean, when everything happened um, around the end of March, it's kind of like no one had kind of prepared for it, really. So right. when they sent us home, well, they gave us the option at first to stay. Um, so I actually stayed for like the first two weeks, and then I was like, all right, I'm going to go back home because this is not really going to get uh, sorted out anytime soon. So yeah, man, kind of just been planning by air. I mean, people, they do like normal checkup calls and stuff, but it's pretty much just you're on your own. Um, and then... When they call us back, it's going to be like a three-day window probably of, hey, yeah. your flight is in three days or two days or whatever. So, yeah, it's pretty – it's weird. It's definitely something that I never really thought about. Um, but everybody's dealing with stuff. So, exactly. Yeah. It's, yeah. It's, it's awkward. Yeah, man. It seems like um, baseball is one of the only ones you guys haven't really, like, figured something out as far as, like, either canceling or going through with it. It seems like you guys are still in that gray area. Yeah, definitely. Um, I think because the timing of it, because we hadn't officially started our season yeah. yet. Um, so I feel like with NBA, it's easier for them to just go right to playoffs. They had already played. They had got past the All-Star game already. So yeah, they true. already played most of the season. Um, and then football, they can – like football has way more time to prepare and stuff like that. Um, right. But, yeah, it kind of – it heated up. It got like at its peak right when the beginning of the season would happen for us. So Exactly, yeah. It was it was tough, um, and now it's kind of like a, a stalemate between the union and the owners trying to figure right. out the pay, and uh, I think they have they have like where we would play and everything situated for the most part, besides a few teams. Um, but the mon- the ma- the main thing that's that's holding everything up is just like the pay, trying right. to figure out how much how much they want to give us. So, yeah. what would be what would be your ideal situation? Like if if you could come up with the the you know, the best case scenario or whatever? Um, so it's kind of weird. Um, because I'm like a young guy, I haven't officially debuted yet. I'm kind of in this, I'm kind of in the point where I'm like, I really just play like with the, right, right. the revenue sharing with the owners want to do in my position. I'm like, all right, I know I will make like a lot less percentage wise or what I would make, but I would take it. I mean, I want to yeah. get my clock started and plan. But on the other side, if I was like a, a older guy, like I already have a contract um, and stuff like that, like a multi-year deal, right. I would for sure be in the in the spot where I'm like, like I don't I don't I don't want to pay for anything less than what I should. Like I get prorated. Like the owners in the union when it when it all happened, they agreed to a prorated contract. 
Mm-hmm. Um, but in the wording of the deal, they could revisit it, which is kind of kind of weird. Um, this above what what I knew. Um, <laughs> but yeah, so once once they realized it was gonna be no fans, that's when they kind of like mm. wanted to change up the deal. But yeah, man, I mean, you got guys. Yeah, look at it. you got guys like Garrett Cole and stuff that I think he should be making like thirty two mil this year. Yeah. If it was revenue sharing, he would make like seven. So right. Yeah. It's tough. It's tough. Like guys like that. Yeah, I get. I get the. I get both sides of the argument, kind of. Yeah, it's tough, I guess, because you can't really please everyone. It seems like there's two opposite ends of the spectrum of like, yeah. you know, like you said, like yourself, who's more or less debuting, and then someone like Garrett Cole, who's on the other end of the spectrum. And so, yeah, you know, I can see how it's hard to to get it like a deal done. So, you know, what is like. What is quarantine and what is like this downtime of you not being in the season? Like, what does that look like for you? Um, I don't know. I mean, when it first happened, I kind of like I kind of went into straight off season mode. Like, I was mm-hmm. chilling a lot. Um, the thing that really sucked was just everything was closed. Like, it wasn't just right. a baseball thing, and it was like a normal off season. It was legit. I couldn't go anywhere. So in the house. Right. I watched some shows. Um, I probably took, I probably took like two weeks off from any like mm-hmm. baseball activity, really. Um, and then I slowly started to ramp it up. But at the same time, it was kind of like, I don't want to hit it hard like every single day, like I'm in season when we could be not playing for two, three months, exactly. or like the whole we could miss the whole season. So I wanted to stay fresh, but at the same time, like not overwork myself. Yeah, um, <laughs> it's kind of funny. I kind of kind of did with breaking my hammock but <laughs> yeah man you want to uh, talk about that real quick how did that happen um so yeah so me uh spence and a couple guys in the area we came up with like live bp to stay fresh um so we have been doing it for a month i think um yeah i think it was the it was the fourth live bp we did uh about a week and a half ago um pretty much i fouled off a pitch and it's, it's weird it happens it happens pretty much on one one swing. It happens. Um, about off a pitch, kind of got a little overextended. And right when it happened, I didn't feel a pop. And it wasn't, like, really painful. It was just mm-hmm. like, wow, like, my wrist is kind of locked up. And wow. I pretty much lost all my strength in my hand, like, right then and there. Um, then coming to find out, like, knowing after speaking to the doctor and stuff, the handmade, it's kind of like a hook on it, which is weird. But it's a nerve that runs like right through it and or like hooks around it. And pretty much when it when it snapped, it kinda messed up the the nerve and the ligament right there. It kinda mm. like didn't mess it up, but it like jarred it. So that's where my wrist was like all tight and like I had lost all my strength. So it's weird. I mean a lot of baseball players deal with it. Like I have several friends that have had it happen. Um oh, okay. I'm glad yeah. It's it happens. It's a small, small injury compared to all the other things that could have happened. Um, right. It's a short recovery time, so it's not too bad. Is this, um, is this your first, I guess, whether you consider it major or not, is this your first major injury? Have you had any other injuries or, or big setbacks in your, in your baseball journey? Um, I've been pretty fortunate. Um, yeah, this would probably be the biggest injury um, in terms of time missed. Um, again, we're not playing, but if it wasn't a season, I would miss – pretty much six to eight weeks. Um, right. And it kind of – some people come back shorter. I mean, it all depends on how much pain you can play through. Because your whole – the whole healing process is just your hand healing. Right, um, right. I've had other injuries that I've missed time. Like, um, I've sprained my, uh, sprained my ankle. Um, last year I had, like, uh, I had a hamstring injury and an oblique, but nothing nothing quite six weeks. Um, it's kind of funny. It's probably the least – one of the least painful injuries. Interesting, yeah. Hand. Yeah, really, like my ankle when I sprained that in my oblique, Dude. those those hurt. Yeah, but those like really hurt. But my hand is kind of like right now. I have a broken bone in my hand, and it doesn't unless I move it a certain way, it doesn't hurt. It doesn't hurt. Yeah, at all. that's interesting. So, yeah, yeah. Well, good. Well, good luck to you. So you're going into surgery tomorrow. So good luck to you, bro, with the uh, with the recovery Thanks. process. Thanks, um, I appreciate it. Yeah. So yeah, man, let's backtrack a little bit. So. I actually knew of you through we we were trained um, by like the same trainer back in the day, mm-hmm. and so I had heard your name and I had known like your name for a while, 
Um, and then, you know, obviously my best friend and you are, are you guys like hit together a lot and take uh, BP and stuff like that. So I was fascinated just with like your journey because we did kind of go to um, more or less similar schools in high school. And yeah. so, you know, like I, like I mentioned before and, and like the, the premise of the brand and the podcast is really like being able to divide yourself from the norm and like find what you love, whatever that is. And so for you, obviously it was baseball. And so, um, you know, have you always, is baseball always been your thing? Like, have you always known that you wanted to pursue baseball? And, and if not, like, when did that really become apparent for you? Um, I mean, yeah, from a young age, like, I, I pretty much figured out, like, I love baseball. Um, I was pretty good at it. Um, but things really didn't get serious until I would probably say high school, uh, mm. maybe late middle school. Um, I knew, like, I knew I wanted to go play in college and stuff, but in terms of like big leagues, like probably eighth grade, I was okay. Like I'm really good. Like I, I could potentially, if I continue on the same track, put myself in a position where I could possibly like play pro ball and make it to the show. Right. Um, so pretty much in high school was when I really narrowed down just baseball. Like everything right. I kind of did was around baseball besides school and stuff. Um, I didn't play, I ran track into a track but other than that I didn't play any other sport um I just focused on baseball um yeah and then that like it's weird um I feel like I guess other sports are the same way but like once summer hit I pretty much played only time I didn't play was winter damn um, yeah and that was the only time like I still trained I just didn't play any games per se um but yeah it's always been it's always been that um when I was younger I've always liked like military and stuff like that. Um, that was another option that I thought about. But mm. once, once, once I started getting looks and like professional looks, it was like, all right, yeah, this is this is the route I'm gonna take. Um, it's funny uh, how we were talking before. Like I've never, right. I've never visioned myself in like a nine to five. Like even, right, even right. nothing. Again, nothing's wrong with with that. No, like right. nothing at Absolutely. all. But it's just for me. Even if baseball didn't work out, I don't know what exactly I would have done um I would have went to college and got my degree but I just didn't I never wanted to be like a nine to five guy I just yeah, think man. that would have been I'd have lost my mind like I need to be moving around or something right um, right so yeah so so that yeah that's interesting I, I think like that that's probably you know part of the reason you are where you're at today is because it seemed like there was really no other option like there was like so and I guess going on that was there anything where you're like man if I, if I don't make it than this was there I mean obviously people have doubts but for you I guess let's take because you were drafted out of high school correct mm, yeah so let's take yep. let's take like you know junior maybe senior year of high school was there any doubt or were you you know pretty confident that you're like this is this is my thing this is what I'm going to do like there's nothing that's going to stop me um maybe a little bit of doubt but I mean it was always like this this is what I'm going to do until I can't yeah. play it anymore until someone says like hey pretty much Troy, like, you're not good enough or right. whatever. Like, until I couldn't play, that's what I was going to do. Um, I mean, I thought about, like I said, military, that was something I was like, all right, if I don't play baseball or if it doesn't work out after college, I'll probably join the military. Um, right. But other than that, I never really thought about anything, like, serious. Um, I mean, I like different things. Um, it'd be cool to be a firefighter. Yeah. Um, and other little things like that, but, yeah. That was, I've always been pretty much locked set on baseball. So, so what's something that helped you the most, whether it's like mindset or whether it's, um, you know, maybe like a, something around you and, and your surroundings, what's something that you attest a lot to where you're at now that really helped you, whether it was, um, you know, staying after practice, whether it was working out, you know, five times a week, like, was there anything that you remember from high school that you do all the way to now that really helped you get to where you're at? Um... I would say like the hard work um, and then just the influences in my life. Uh, I know when I was younger, like my parents and my family pretty much like making them proud was kind of like yeah, man. my goal. Um, and I knew, I knew regardless how I played, they were going to be proud. But at the same time, it was like, like if I play really well, like they'll be really proud. Um, right. Right. And it, I mean, if it wasn't for my father, I probably wouldn't have gotten into baseball. I know like around the Baltimore area, a lot of like African American kids don't play baseball. Um, right. And growing up, like probably my favorite sport to watch is football. Like uh -huh. I've always, I sometimes I think about it like, man, like 
what if I play football? But that's just <laughs> that's just like a joking thought in my mind. <laughs> right. But um, yeah, yeah, I mean that's that's always been my main thing. Um, I've always looked at pretty much. I mean, some guys, some guys are just God given and they just have it. But right. to be the best, you have to work hard. Like even absolutely, the God given stuff only takes you so far. So that was my main thing. If I wanted to be good, like I had, I had to work hard. I had to practice on the things that I struggle with. Um, yeah, man. And just make myself overall better. Um, and then like the motivation part was just, like I said, like my family, making them proud. Yeah. Um, and then being able to help them out too. Cause I know the summer circuit, especially high school, like they, every weekend I was in a different state. So mm. it was, they were doing a lot, sacrificing a lot. Yeah, to man. Me. Yeah. Yeah, I was going to say, was, it seems like – oh, go ahead. Sorry. No, no, I was just about to say, like, that was my main motivation, I would say. Yeah, I, mean, I was going to say, I knew you – like, you and your father was really, were really close, so I figured, like, he had – you know, he had – it obviously seems like your parents were very supportive, and, and you wanted to, like, take their support and kind of, like, do good for, for them, too. So it's cool to see that. Um, was there anything, like, real challenges or maybe people who – tried to get in your way, whether it was like negativity or, or was there any real challenges that you faced in high school when you were like, this is something I want to do for a career? W w did you go through any major obstacles, anything like that along the way? Um, honestly, for me, not really. Um, the main thing, baseball is so mental. I feel like, like yeah, the man. good, the thing that separates the good players and the, the, I guess, not so good players is, is the mental game. Um, even if you have it, like somebody can have every physical tool and everything, but the yep. swing be good and everything, but just not perform because right. mentally they just held back. Um, so that was my main thing. Like after I've always been pretty good with like struggles, like say I had a bad game. Yeah, man. I wouldn't, I wouldn't really, I wouldn't really like, I wouldn't lose sleep over it. I would say, um, so that's, I, I would, I would say recover quick. I would say, um, but yeah, that was not really a high school. I really didn't. I really didn't get, I guess, obstacles and stuff. And instead, until pro ball, I would say. Right. Um, but yeah, high school was just. I just tried to have fun with it. Um, yeah, man. Yeah, that was that was the main thing. Pro ball. Once you start getting paid to play, it's a little bit different. Like you still got to keep the fun in it, but right. it's just more. It's more thoughts going through your mind. Baseball was just in high school was just fun. Like just have yeah. fun, do well, and yeah. Yeah, that's such a crazy thing because, you know, a lot of people, I feel like when you're watching kids, um, like let's take high school, for example, like there's a lot of kids that are stud athletes and you just see them, they fall off, you know, along the way. And that's why so few people make it. And I think it's amazing to hear that you've, that you've always had that mindset, like you don't lose sleep over a bad game. Cause I feel like so many people will do that and they're not like consistent and they don't keep that just, uh, just keep going, you know, through the good times, through the yeah. bad times, like keep going. So that's, you know, a real testament to you to that you never at least up until pro ball had to deal with that so so um you know talk to me about like pro ball what were some of the difficulties like at, you know first getting in because being drafted from high school I mean that, that's such a, yeah. like, a crazy thing you're so young and all of a sudden like you're getting all this money to go play professional baseball and so walk me through yeah. like that process if you don't mind and like maybe just the mindset behind that um so pretty much going into it the the stress kind of started before the draft and everything, high school baseball was just fun. But senior year, like getting close to the draft, for sure the stress started. Um, you start thinking about it, and everybody says, oh, "I don't think about it." Like, you know, like right. do your own thing. <laughs> but it's kind of impossible. Like, you don't want to. I always tell people that I know going through the same process. I say, like, you're gonna think about it, but just, just play your own game. Like, you don't have to do extra. Like, right, they, right. they, you got their attention from playing your game. So just do that really well. Um, but yeah, I mean, got drafted, um, and the first, the first main, like kind of smack in the face, not smack in the face, but like surprise was, so I graduated high school on Friday, a week later, um, I got drafted. And then I want to say three days later, I flew out to AZ. Wow. Well, I flew up to Milwaukee and then I was in AZ. Um, and right there it was like, like seeing all your buddies and friends go to senior week and all that type of yeah. stuff was like, yeah, that's awesome. But you, you, I couldn't go, which same time it's like, yeah, I'm in pro ball now. It's, it's awesome. But it just goes back to the point of like the sacrifice that you take yeah, to, to make it to the goal. But 
the main thing, once Pro Bowl hit, like I was 18, um, I didn't have that support system that was mm. there that I had the whole time. Like I was right. only there for three months. Um, AZL is kind of your first year in, in Pro Bowl out of high school is like, yeah, it's like a, a warm up class, I guess, because you're gotcha. only playing for three months. Um, but still, my, my, I remember I talked, I talked with fellow like other high school teammates I had that same year, but I would say like a month in, I was hitting like 220 in AZL. And I had never hit 220 before. Damn. And I remember, I remember contemplating about like how, like, man, did I make the right choice? Like, should I wow. went to college? Wow. And like legit, first time, first time I was like losing sleep over stuff. Um, and then I, I was able to recover a little bit and, and have a good year. But that was like the first main thing. Um, and then it's kind of funny. You go from you go from high school to where everybody, like your coaches and everything, is like a authority figure. To mm. where pro ball, your coaches are authority figure, but you call them by their first name. Like you don't you don't call your pro ball coach coach. Right. I did uh, you hear can that. Get, That's you, yeah, you can go. You can say skip or something like that, but you don't say coach because technically we're all colleagues. Like my AZ, my AZL coach told me that he was like, we all we all are colleagues. Um, I just kind of teach you or coach you or whatever, but yeah. Right. Um, so you're, you're, you're kind of treated like a grown man at 18, which is good, but at the same time, yeah. it's kind of like, wow, this is different. Um, and then you also plan with grown men. Like I'm playing ACL wasn't too many, but I mean, when I was 20, I played with guys that had families and I'm like, like it was just, it's just different. Like the conversations in the locker yeah, room. Man. It's just new conversations that you never really had to deal with. Um, but each year, each year is kind of – you go through your struggles up and down. I mean, baseball, no matter who you are, you're going to – it's going to be up and down. Um, yeah. And you're going to fail a lot, as you know. Like, you fail the most in baseball than any other sport that I can think of. Um, yeah. Um, that's a lot. I mean, it's a lot of stuff. The travel, like after after my first year, so AZL, you just stay in AZ. Um, my second year, I was in Helena, Montana for short season. Dang. By far, by far the the worst place I played at. Like field wise, the people there were cool, but just the town was super small. The field sucked. Um, there was le- legit nothing to do. I mean, unless you. I like outdoors, but I'm not like a diehard like, right. fisherman and hunter. <laughs> right, right. Um, we had a we had a couple guys on the team that loved like the outdoors, like loved hiking and fishing and hunting um, more than more than us. So I mean, they enjoyed it, but I'm not waking up at 5 a.m. to fish before before a game. <laughs> like, yeah, <laughs> like I like fishing, but that's not me. Um, but yeah, I mean, the travel in that league wasn't the best. Um, I remember that was my first time. Uh, we went down to from Helena, Montana to Grand Junction, Colorado. It was like 13 hours. Dang. And I was on a coach bus, doubled up for 13 hours. Like oh we stopped gosh, a couple of times, bro. but <laughs> legit, like it's a lot. It's a lot that you have to deal with um, in Pro Bowl. But that's, but that's the main reason why you kind of have to love it. I mean, yeah, man. You got to. Yeah, I mean, I tell guys again, guys that go through the process, especially when they're on the fence on college or pro ball. I'm like, look, yeah. I don't know about college because I didn't experience it, but pro ball, this is what you have to look forward to. Um, yeah, and you just have to, you just have to adjust quickly to make it. Mm. Um, I would say, and that's that's outside of actually playing the game. I would say, right? That's I mean, everything that's, else you didn't even mention yeah. about playing yet, right? Yeah, um, and then yeah, playing is you, you have to figure out how to way to, to be ready and focus on the game every day um, and to still make it fun because it is – once you get in a pro ball, it is like you're getting paid, so it's your job. But Right, man. You got to make it fun. At the end of the day, it's a game. Um, and I tell myself – I don't know if this is random, but I tell myself also with, with baseball, like no matter how good I do in baseball, I'm not going to play baseball the rest of my life. Like, it's not, it's not, I mean, max, I'll play to like 40, 45. That would be a right. great career. But I'm right. still, that's half my life. So, 
baseball is just like it's just a game. You have to keep it simple, um, and that kind of helps me play well um, to not put too much pressure on myself. Say like at the end of the day, like I have this is not the end all be all. Yeah, if I fail. dude, um, I love that man. That's such like a like like it almost seems like you're saying that's not what defines you because it's not like you're there's there's so much more that you're gonna do and there's so much more that you are. Right. And I feel yeah. like that's such a, that's such a cool perspective that you have. I feel like I can see how that keeps it, you know, fun thinking that way, because I feel like when Definitely. stuff become, you know, like not to mention all those other things you said, but when stuff starts to become not fun and it feels like a job, that's, it's so tough to, to keep going through that process, yeah. you know? So that, that's a cool perspective. I'm, I'm glad you, you mentioned that. Yeah. Um, yep. But yeah, that's no, kinda, just, go ahead. No, I was saying that's, that's kind of how I feel. Again, nothing's wrong with a nine to five, but I feel like a nine to five just wouldn't be be fun to me. Like baseball, yeah. it's the same game, but I never know what's gonna happen. Yeah. Like anything can happen in the game. Where like a nine to five, anything can happen, but at the same time, my routine is pretty pretty set on For what sure. I'm doing. Um but yeah. No, yeah, dude, that's yes. cool, man. Like, it's it's so crazy because you you mentioned so many things that I don't, you know, as like a regular person who's just a casual baseball fan, I wouldn't think about. But it, it makes you realize how much you really have to love it and, um, to be able to to stick through it. Because, like you said, you it seemed like you were forced to grow up so fast. Like you moved, you're 18 years old. All of a sudden, they fly you out three days or five days after you get drafted. You know, you have all these grown men around you. You're you're just playing baseball yeah. and you're traveling, and so like and, and like we said, that's not even you haven't even started playing yet, and so it, it just makes me realize just you know listening to that how much other things there other factors there are where people just kind of probably fall through the cracks, and and I think yeah. a lot of it comes back to like what you were saying, like you just have to remember that it's a game and that it's you know like keep the fun aspect of it as well. Yep, yep. that's cool, man. Like you can't so, you can't. Like, yeah, 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 you said it, you yeah. said it perfectly. Yeah, man, dude, that's cool. So how long, so, uh, you know, once you first got into pro ball, what, what was the journey like up until, cause now you're on the, the 40 man Detroit Tigers roster. So what's the, what was that process in between, you know, being in the MLB now versus pro ball and, and kind of the in between there, how was that process for you? Um, I mean, it's a long process. Yeah. For me, everybody's, yeah. That's another thing. People always say, like, everybody's process is different. Um, mm -hmm. And it's just it, – it's your own journey. I mean, I've, yeah. I've been fortunate enough. I mean, my goal – it's funny. When I – I was just telling somebody else's story. So, in high school, uh, scouts would do, like, home visits and stuff. Sorry, my phone keeps, like, leaning. Are you but good, man? Scouts would, good. Do, scouts would do home visits. And I remember one of the scouts came – it was actually a real scout. Um, he asked me – he was like – So if we pick you, like, how long do you think it'll take to get to the show? Um, and I'm like, you know, probably like two, three years. Um, and I like, that's how I really felt, seriously. Yeah. And here I am, year, this is, if you include 2014, this is year seven. Wow. Is year seven? No, six. No, uh, six. This is year six. It's like, yeah, it wasn't two to three years. <laughs> well. <laughs> but, I mean, it is, it is what it is, yeah. So. Yeah, man. I'm still kind of in front of the curve I would say but yeah I mean I've I moved up pretty much every a new level each year um yeah but I mean it's it's been long I mean I've seen a lot of the country I mean with the Brewers the funny thing is their affiliates are all over so I was in Arizona then Montana then I was Dude, in yeah. Appleton Wisconsin then I was in Raleigh North Carolina and this is this is each year up right um and then I was in Biloxi Mississippi and last year I was in San Antonio, Man. Texas. Yeah, so it's a lot. Um, a big, a big uh, difference was AAA because AAA you fly a lot, um, and in the league PCL is like the travel is, you travel like a good amount more than other league. Um, but <laughs> before going into it, I was like, man, when we fly, like it's gonna be awesome. Like flights is much better than a bus. Right. But no, nah, not not for us. A lot of our Dang. wake up calls were like 4 a.m., 3 a.m. Um, so San Antonio was kind of weird. It's the seventh biggest city in the country, but for some reason that airport is super small. Like I don't know why. It's <laughs> it's it's smaller than Baltimore. Like it's it's wow. small. Like it's not that many terminals. So 
almost all of our flights were layovers. Like we had to go to Dallas or Houston for a few hours. And this is like waking up. We woke up at like four. Yeah. So do all that. It's another step that people don't think about. People just see yeah, the players no, yeah. just play. But we go into, say we went to, I don't know, anywhere. But we, we woke up at four, um, get to the airport at like 5.30 or five or whatever. Flight to 6.30. Um, 6.37, you fly to Dallas. Uh, that's like an hour or maybe a little bit less. Two-hour layover, and then you fly to your actual city. Get to the airport. Get to the hotel at like 11. Probably take a nap for like two hours. <laughs> and then and then you head to the field and do all your routine. Man. We're, I mean, we're at the field. A normal day, I'm at the field from 2 to around like 11. That's crazy, man. Yeah. I mean, you talk about like the stuff that people don't see, like I, that's news to me. I mean, that's, and, and to, to backtrack a little bit, like six years, like it, it, baseball is so different. Like just being able to be consistent and, and like you said, move up a level each year is so crazy. When you think about other sports, like, you know, take uh, the NBA or the NFL where people are going right from college to the actual major league sport. Right. Yeah. So like not just the professional, but the actual like the highest level. And so yeah. it's just so crazy to think that, you know, six years is like fantastic, you know, being able yeah. to get to the MLB. It, it's such a I mean, like talk about just sticking with yeah. it man, and being consistent. That's a crazy thing that I don't think a lot of people realize is that six years is actually like very good. Right. And like yeah. that's that's such a crazy thing, man. Yeah. I mean, everybody, okay, everybody's journey is different. Some guys right. make it up super quick some guys i mean you'll see a story every now and then it'll be like a 11 year minor league makes his debut or like Damn. something like that and then it's like like i admire people like that because they stuck with it i mean a lot of guys a lot of guys just they want to get that life started it's kind of hard yeah. in minor league baseball to like i mean guys do it they have families and stuff but like this it's hard because it takes so much time away mm. from the other aspect of life but right yeah um, that's crazy, man. So, so aside cool. of the stuff that, aside of the stuff that you haven't mentioned, as far as like the stuff that a lot of people don't realize, what's something else that, what would you say is the thing that's like the most misconception about, um, people who are maybe fans or people who haven't done like the professional baseball experience that you don't think that, or that people don't realize, like, does that make sense? Yeah. Um, so for me, I don't know about other people. A lot of people think just because I'm in pro ball, like I have a lot of money or something. Ah. That's, that's, that's one thing that like, I don't know. I mean, my signing bonus was, was pretty nice, but right. like, I'm not, I'm not rich by any means. Um, I mean, there's a lot of players that are, but you really, I mean, you make a good amount of money in the big leagues. Don't get me wrong. Like the minimum salary is really nice, but guys mm -hmm. don't really stop making actual like like dough cheese until six years in so like i've been right, six years right. in the minor leagues you don't hit free agency until six years in big leagues so like crazy, big yeah. league time um that's probably the biggest misconception um i mean people i don't know people know like baseball is pretty hard like hitting that's one of the hardest things to do in any sport um, right right some, I mean, it's a couple little minor ones, but that's like the biggest one for me. Like a bunch of people back home, like they'll find out, oh, oh, you play for the Tigers? Oh, okay. Like, like they see me in a Jeep, but it's like, like, nah, I'm not, I'm not balling like that. <laughs> right, right. Well, it's interesting. I mean, uh, that that's true with a lot of, I think, professional sports is, is people see like a status and assume that like the, that like tons and tons of money come with it. But when you take in like, paying like your agents, your trainers, exactly. your ta taxes, which is most of it, you know, it, yeah. it's, uh, I think that's yeah, taxes. That was, <laughs> right. that was a big thing. Like my signing bonus, like I, what I signed for, I got, I don't know, after taxes, I was like, wow. Probably got, what, that, that was me. Of yeah. That was me at, at 18. Like I really didn't know, right. but after I got the full, the full amount, I was like, wow, that's, this is not what I agreed to, <laughs> but, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but yeah, it's, it's, it's funny. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's, it's a, it's a couple different little things people right. will joke about and stuff, but my main thing is people I've kind of, kind of talked about earlier, but people don't see what goes on in the background, like all the training that you have to do. 
the stuff for me, like I'm 24 now and I'm just starting to hit the point where like, I really have to take care of my body. Like when I was 18, mm -hmm. I got bowel for some stuff. Like I didn't have to stretch as much. Like my body was yeah. just, I recovered really quick. Right. Um, but now I'm 24, like the cold tub contrast, like all that stuff is like really important. Like that's guys, I know guys that stretch for an hour, hour and a half just to get ready to play. And it's yeah. like, I'm not to that point yet, but like it's a lot that, that guys have to do to get ready to play. And yeah. even like 30, 30 is looked at as like really young. Like that's still a young guy, but right. in the sports world, that's like, like I'm, I'm getting up there. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so, well, yeah, well, yeah, yeah. that's interesting. I, especially, I feel like, especially, you know, with like social media or just with people um, being able to see the product on TV, a lot of people just assume that you, you just get to that point. Right. It's yeah. like, but people don't understand the hours and hours of training, the, um, just everything else that goes into it. So it's cool to, to, for you to be able to kind of speak on that, to give people some awareness. Um, but yeah. kind of going off that, like what advice would you give to somebody like, let's say from one of our high schools who is like super passionate, but they see everybody else is going one direction and they don't know if they should follow what they love or, or that sort of thing. Like what advice would you give somebody who is maybe similar position to you who loves something, but is also maybe distracted with a lot of like what they should be doing, um, so to speak. Like, um, what advice would you maybe give someone like that? Um, I would say first, I mean, like for me, I looked at, before I made my decisions, I looked at my family and mm. I was like, what's like, what's going to work out the best? Um, like for instance, I went to, I was signed to go to Maryland um, and I love Maryland. I wanted to stay local, but I kind of didn't, look at other schools as much because I knew with the offer that they gave me, my parents would have been nice. They, they would have right. been paying less money at Maryland and Keller Hall. Um, so it was kind of like, all right, I'm not going to look at these other schools to help out my parents. Um, but I mean, whatever, I would always say, follow what you love. I mean, if you love baseball, um, then keep like, keep pursuing it. Um, yeah. You have to, I mean, once you get like 18, you kind of are becoming a man and you have to be realistic right. with yourself. Um, and you have to, you always have like in sports, you have to compare yourself to others. Like if you, if you're looking at other guys getting drafted and you like comparing, like, oh, I'm better than them, then yeah, like keep, keep pursuing it. But yeah. at the same time, if you're looking at guys, like you could love baseball to death. And I knew guys that loved, like they, they slept, ate, thought like everything baseball and yeah. they didn't make it. For whatever reason, like they just didn't have the skill. Um, but you have to be realistic with yourself with, to where are you doing more harm? Or are you doing mm. like, yeah, I mean, you, you get the point. Um, yeah, that's what I would say. Advice. I mean, I would say talk to your friends, um, like your closest friends about like what, what you want to do, what you're trying to like struggling with, um, contemplating. Um, but yeah, I mean, the biggest thing. It's like with baseball, the biggest thing is because you fail so much, you have to have a support system. You have to be able to absolutely talk to people and like relieve that stress. Um, because like, especially in pro ball, like it gets, it gets trying sometimes where like I've had times where I completely, I forgot to hit, like I'm in the box and I'm like, <laughs> what am I doing? To where I just talk to people and I kind of, mm. if they kind of like reinforce it, like, Hey man, how did I look? And they'll be like, man, you look fine. Like, you just miss hit that ball or whatever. And that kind of helps you out. And yeah. that you can take that same approach to in high school. Um, if you're trying to figure out like what you want to do and stuff. Um, I don't know if that answers your question exactly, but I mean, that that's what I would tell people. Um, again, if you, if you love something and by all means do it. Um, yeah. Yeah. So no, I think that, that, no, that you definitely answered my question. I think between, like you said, like being realistic, making sure you love it, and then like having the support around you, I think that's that's all really good advice. Um, yeah. yeah, for sure. What well, What do you so feel kinda, like? What, oh, go ahead. Sorry. No, I was just about to say, I, I asked myself in high school before I like kind of just focused on baseball. I was like, do I love baseball? And it was like, mm. yeah, 100%. So I went full, full throttle. Dude, and, and that's like the thing, man. I always say that, it, like, you got to start with what you love. And I, I promise people that, like, everything else will come. If you are consistent yeah. and you just work hard 
it, it doesn't matter. Like it, it might take a long time and like, but it will pay off. So if you, that's why I always say like lead with what you love. And that's why it's so cool for me to see and everyone I get on here, but especially you, cause you know, you're at a very high level and you're doing something that, you know, from, from where we went to high school is so different. That's why I love it. And it's it just so yeah. cool to see that you like, you loved something and you just took it all the way and it's, and it's paying off and, you're still having fun with it, you know, six years later and you still love it. It's awesome to see, man. Yeah, definitely. Definitely. So I mean, what, what, oh, go ahead. No, no, no. Just, I, I make little minor comments. I was about to say, like, it's been trying sometimes, but yeah, at the end of the day, it's, I love it. I still love it. That's so, awesome, man. What, what's your well favorite part? What's your favorite part about baseball? Um, my favorite part, um, Honestly, my favorite part is like just being around the boys. Like, yeah, just, man. Yeah, like competing. Um, like that's that's my favorite part. I mean, like I love at the end of the season. Of course, everyone's tired, but I love going to the field and like the locker room talks, playing the game, um, like clutch situations, like competing and yeah, just being man. with the boys. That's that's my favorite part. Um, and like I'm a clown most of the time, like in the locker room. Um, <laughs> So like, I'm kind of that, like, I make people laugh a little bit. But, yeah, I mean, that's that's my favorite part, like, competing. Um, and, of course, you want wins, but, like, win-lose at the end of the day. If it's like, all right, I was competing, I gave it my all, um, and I, like, prepared in the right way to put myself in the right position to succeed, it's like, yeah, I can't ask for anything more. That's awesome, man. So yeah. I want to be super respectful of your time, but I do want to do, like, maybe, like, two more kind of questions, if that's cool with you. Oh, yeah, no. Nah. Yeah, we're – Cool, bro. Yeah, we're good. Yeah. Cool, man. So I'm curious, like, when you did make it to the MLB, um, you're obviously playing in front of a lot more people. What was the first experience like? Um, so kind of a two-parter, but what was your first experience like in the MLB? And then also, what's it like, I mean, as far as nerves and playing in front of a lot more people, what, what's that whole experience and what was your first experience like of that? Um, so my first, so I haven't debuted yet, but my first like real time was probably big league camp with the Brewers, um, mm. in 2019. Um, like I'm with a bunch of big league guys, like veteran guys, um, like Yelich was in the locker room, Braun. Yeah. That's like crazy. it's a ton of, it's a ton of guys. Um, but I mean, the first couple of days was kind of like you were a little bit quiet, but at the same time you start to realize like these guys are just like me, like they're baseball players. Um, some guys are older. Um, it's different personalities. That's one thing with baseball. Like you see, you see guys from all different walk, like, like everybody has a different background. Um, right, right. Everybody's from different parts of the country um, and then the world too. Um, but yeah, I mean, playing, honestly, playing in front of fans has never really bothered me. Like it could be That's cool, like the man. more fans, the more fans, the better. That's wow. the more like the more hype I'll get. Um, it's kind of the lower levels, honestly, is the more like trying because you're playing a game where like some games it's like ten people, or some you might go to a city and it's like ten thousand. Right. Um, so yeah, I mean, I always I love playing. The more fans, the better. Like I love. That's it. cool, man. It's never. That's crazy. It's never really bothered me. And even like people that people that heck like heckle. Like fans that yell at you and stuff, like it's always funny to me. Yeah, <laughs> I've had some, I've had some bad experiences the way like it's like all right, they need to relax. But mm. at the same time, I think that's part of like the fan experience. Like as long as you don't say anything disrespectful to me, like right, I'm, right. I'm for it. I've actually, I've actually turned fans to like be my fans. Wow, that's cool, like, man. Especially in the outfield, like I'm always, I'm like close <laughs> to people. Um, yeah. And they're not, like, right where, like, they're not close to the pitcher, so no one really, like, hears them that much. Um, but, yeah, I've had fans, like, yelling at me. And, like, they'll talk about me, like, first they be, oh, you didn't even touch the ball or whatever. <laughs> and then, like, seventh inning, I've got, like, two hits or whatever. And they're, like, they've chilled or, like, they've started, like, rooting for me or something. Like, it, That's it's, cool, it's man. fun. So, yeah. Um, so going off that, what, what's like the most fun or the uh, most funny either MLB like experience or fan experience that you've had just in general? Um, I gotta think. I gotta think. Um, most funny, most funny. or one you can think um, of that's that's been just that sticks with you or something. Fan experience is probably in Myrtle Beach. Um, I got these fans to follow me on uh, IG. They actually invited me out for drinks like this is like oh, wow. the game 
Yeah. Oh, wow. Um, that's probably the biggest fan experience. I didn't go that's out crazy, with them, man. like drinks, but I want to say they still follow me on IG. I'm not sure. That's but, cool, yeah. man. Um, that's probably the, the best fan experience. It was like a group. It was like, I want to say like it was like six people, but like three of them followed me. Um, I threw them a ball at the end of the game Damn. and stuff. Like they were, they were cool. Um, I mean, it's a bunch. Like fan experience, yeah. it's a bunch. Like on deck, like I love, I love when kids on deck and like oh, I'll man. dap them up. I'll dap them up or something. I'll give them a fist pound. Um, that's always pretty cool. Um, but yeah, like fans experience, it's, it's a bunch. Um, that uh, that's so in terms cool, man. Of, Keep on what you're saying. I, I was gonna say that's so cool. Like I can remember being a little kid, and one of the the main moments that sticks out to me is when like the the uh, Montreal Expos were hitting BP, and I was just a little kid, and my dad like I was waving to the, one of the players, like a shorts. I was I actually remember his name, like Mike Mordecai, but he was on the Montreal Expos, and I kept waving to him. My dad's like, keep waving to him, like just like let him. And it, he brought me a baseball, and that's one of the coolest experiences of my life. And so it's it's cool. Uh-huh. That, that stuff that you do, just little stuff like that, like dapping up a little, like a little dude, like sitting by the batter's box or, or throwing yeah. a, a ball to a fan can have like such a huge impact. And it's such a cool thing to them, you know? Yeah. It's pretty cool. I like, guess it's, it's a good feeling. Um, and sometimes I'm like, man, I just like created a fan. I just got a new fan or something. Exactly. So man. Cool. Yeah. That's awesome. Um, cool. Yeah, go ahead. Coach, coach wise. Well, like in terms of, that's uh, I don't I don't really know I don't really know I mean it's been a couple, um, but yeah I'm not sure. Yeah. No, nah, that's cool. I was just curious, but if you had one off the top yeah. of your head, but um, but yeah, man. One thing I also like to do is uh, everyone has something different that that they've gone through. Everyone has a different story, and so one thing I like to do to kind of close out the podcast is if you could give people just one piece of advice to stick with them, like a, a kind of thing that you've learned along your life journey that's helped you the most? Like if you could give one piece of advice to the listeners, what would that be? I would just say, I mean, I guess it's generic, but just like follow your passion. Um, I mean, if you love something, then by all means do it. Um, And like, don't give up, like make sure with me, like I love baseball and the way, the way I succeed is that I prepare in the right way. Like, Mm -hmm. in training and stuff, I put myself in the right position to succeed. Like, getting in the box and feeling like you're not prepared sucks. Like, that's – it's not – it's not good. And sometimes you might succeed, but – and sometimes you might fail when when you feel great in baseball. But it's still like uh, like I was 100% ready and things just didn't work out. Um, But, yeah, that's that's my main thing I would say. Just follow your passion Um, and just, like, hard work. People say, it, it sounds just so generic, but hard work. True, is, man. The generic stuff is the most true. Like, it's been times where I've seen guys that struggled with something, and they just they just worked really hard um, in the cage or something. Say they say they struggle with a breaking ball, um, and they'll just hit a lot of breaking balls off the machine. And two nights later, they get, like, three hits off breaking balls or something. Yeah. Or their numbers against a breaking ball goes up. Um, so yeah, I mean, hard work pays off like legit. Absolutely. Yeah. Dude, I mean, yeah, I I love that, man. I I really, bro, like on a real level, I really admire your hard work, like your humility, um, your dedication, following your passion. And so I really, really admire everything that you've done, everything that you're doing. Um, I wish you the best of luck and everything, man. Sincerely, truly. Um, just wanted to say that. Appreciate it, man. Appreciate it. Really? Yeah, bro. Where where can people find you, man? Like uh, social media, stuff like that, if they want to check you out. Um. So yeah, I have I have a Twitter and, and Instagram. Um. It's funny. My name, <laughs> IG name is Playboy Troy. Um, yeah, it is. It's it's Playboy underscore. It's two underscores. So it's Playboy underscore underscore Troy. And Twitter's the same. Um. If you type in Troy Stokes, you should be able to find it too. So. Cool, man. Yeah. Yep. Sweet, bro. Anything else we missed before we sign out? Um. Yeah, that, I think that, that covers it all for the most part. Cool, man. Yeah. Dude, yeah. like I said, man, I, I really admire you, and I appreciate you coming on here and making the time, bro. It means a lot. Yeah, thanks, man. Thanks for having me. Yeah, I enjoyed course, this. bro. You did it. You made it to the end of the episode. Thank you guys so much for listening or watching the podcast. 
be sure to go like it, subscribe, share, all that stuff that you're supposed to say at the end of the podcast. Thank you guys again, and stay tuned every Thursday, PowerfulOne.com slash podcast, or on the Instagram page, at Powerful, zero N-E, Powerful One. Thank you guys again, and again, last thing, if you guys are interested in being on the podcast, hit me up. If you got a cool story and feel like you really fit uh, you know, the, the mold for Powerful One, hit me up. We'll get you on the podcast. Thank you guys. Stay safe.